I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Moreno, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing, Big Dave? I'm doing good, man. How's it going? Everything getting ready for the trip? Yep, spending the whole day shopping and getting organized for Kevin. It's a lot of going on. When do I get my beard trimmed, man? I look like a, a homeless guy right now. <laughs> yeah, if I walk outside with my Packer cup, they'll throw a change in it. So, I mean, I just want to say, is there an appointment set for that? Yeah, Friday before we leave, we'll be All right, to good, leave. good, because go. I need, I, I actually have to go for haircuts. I'm very excited about that now. <laughs> so this week. Our topic is prestige. In today's Connection Thursday, we're going to discuss allowing prosperity. So we haven't talked on prosperity in a while, and I think you guys are going to like this episode a little bit because we're going to be getting into what is it to allow prosperity. Anything before we get started, David? Uh, no, I just want to say that the week has been going good. The feedback in the community has been um, you know, awesome the last few weeks have been great, the conversations that have been uh, going on. So uh, let's continue it. Let's keep it strong until the weekend. So as we jump into this, we're talking on allowing prosperity. And the topic this week has been prestige. And prestige, as we have discussed this week, is the perception held in admiration for a person, uh, achievement, institution. And prestige is held for certain achievements and one area that holds a lot of prestige in our culture is money and wealth. You agree with that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because we look at those who attain wealth as having power and prestige. And it is this perception that feeds and has created the divide of social classes. Money equals wealth, power equals influence, and prestige equals status. But understand, This is all the illusion of prestige. It's the cultural story that people who are wealthy tend also to be powerful and appear prestigious to others. Yet if we examine this cultural program belief, it's not always true. A plumber may make more money than a college professor. But in our culture, holding a professorship is more prestige than being a blue-collar worker. You understand? Yeah, for sure. So that's kind of how it works. Now, let us discuss prosperity. First, prosperity is an energy. It's a vibration. This is essential to understand as you will learn through today's episode. Prosperity is the state of being wealthy. It is not your bank account. Prosperity is the state of wealth and having a rich and full life. Prosperity is a state. It's a vibration. We build our reality, our life through our vibration. This reality of prosperity is a person living a full, rich life with all the money and happiness he or she needs. Now, the life category finance is just one category of prosperity. So we're going to examine prosperity in all five life categories. So when I see that, David, how do you see that? When we hear prosperity, we're always thinking money or we're always thinking wealth. But really, that's just one life category. We have to talk about prosperity and how it weaves through our entire life in all five life categories. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think that um, the the prosperity mindset, uh, hopefully for, you know, like myself and a lot of people, as you get older, you start to uh, realize that it's outside of just, you know, one category. Because for me in the beginning, it was money and just kind of becoming successful or having status and doing all that stuff. And then to see, you know, some of my friends pass away or something, things like that, you know, you start to look at the health aspect of it. Sure. The same thing with relationships and stuff like that. So I think it, it is a part of the experience of living it because a lot of people who've had unfortunate cards dealt to them 
they may look at prosperity in certain areas more than others. You know, so for me, I didn't have to deal with any of, you know, those bad cards in all the categories. So I focused on money, you know, yeah. but I, I do think that for the majority and I would speak for a lot of the millennials, prosperity just means money. Wealth, well, I would say almost everybody in our culture, because that's a cultural story, right? I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we look at it and we look at all five life categories, prosperity is a state. It's a vibration and prosperity can only be attained in the state of expansion with the base energy courage. Prosperity is attained only on the mountain. No one can attain prosperity in the valley. One may attain money, but again, this is only one life category. If one has wealth and prosperity and finance category and lives in fear and resentment and regret in the relationship life category, this individual does not have the state of prosperity. They may have cultural prestige, but they do not have love, joy, or peace. They don't have happiness. That makes sense to you? Yeah, for sure. There's always so, that missing link. So let's break down the categories and look at prosperity. So first life category, career. Prosperity in your work must be a connection to your purpose. And motivated behavior. If you just work to pay the bills, if you despise your work or your career, you cannot be in prosperity. So my purpose is vitality. My aim is to expand energy. My motivated behavior from heart is to raise vibration. So my vocation, I'm an owner of a personal development company. Its mission is to shift the planet. Check. I have transformational lifestyle program, the Go Right Lifestyle program, to help people to transform body, mind, life experience. Check. I am a professional speaker educating groups and companies on stress mastery and how to live a higher life. Check. We have a podcast, the Stress Mastery Podcast, talking techniques, principles, and truth of how Humans function and operate. We've had, correct me if I'm right or wrong on this, over one and a half million downloads. Yeah. Check. I am a best-selling author teaching how to master stress and raise energy. Check. There is shift coaching and the shift coaching certification that we're creating and the shift coaches that work with us. Check. There's a stress mastery community, a community of like-minded people working on themselves, working to find that skill of conflict resolution. Check. There's the Go Right Supplements. Check. There's the partnership with Dr. Brian and Hybrid Medical Solutions. Check. If you look at my life, everything is checked. I have a career in prosperity. So if I look at the Inspire Purpose, the super millennial, right? His aim is to expand vision. And his motivated behavior is to evoke recognition. So if you did this little exercise, how would you check the boxes of being in prosperity in your career? Uh, for me, I think it's, you know, um, I do what I, I love every day, which allows me to be connected. I think that for an inspired purpose is important because I let that show through my work. The people who visit the websites, the people who go into the community, all these things, the interactions, I think that's the biggest thing, especially as far as career goes, being able to inspire people on a day-to-day, -day, you know, on a platform like the podcast, uh, whether it's in the community one-on-one, you know, the same thing with coaching. Um, I think all of these aspects allow me to kind of allow people to see their own kind of, you know, prestige in their own light like we were talking about this entire week, that they didn't even recognize themselves. And I think it's important because each of you listening needs to do a little inventory of your work, your career, your vocation, and are you in prosperity? That's how you do it. I mean, is a vibration, it's an energy. So if I look at David, his aim as an inspired purpose is to expand vision. I think he's expanding vision. His motivated, motivated behavior when he's connected to heart is to evoke recognition. What's recognition of your true self? I think he's gone. I think he's in the right profession. Now he does different things in the companies that I that I do. 
and he does different things in the company that Patrick does. He does the, he he has his things that he has to work on. We have our things we have to work on. We each have our strengths, and but I do believe you're connected to prosperity. That's prosperity. So then we look at the second life category, finance category. So if you make a million dollars a year and your expenses and bills come to $1.1 million a year, you do not have prosperity. If you make a million dollars a year and your bills and expenses come to a million dollars a year, you do not have prosperity. If you make good money and you make one of those high salaries, to just pay the bills. And if you're working to maintain a social status or prestige, if you're working to maintain the clothes you wear and the house you have and the vacations you take and your Facebook profile, you don't have prosperity. Yes, you may have a nice house, but what is the truth? What's the mortgage? What is it? Is it an investment? Is it? You may drive a BMW or a Tesla, but what is the truth? Are you driving a nice car and then trying to figure out how to pay your bills? You may post pictures of a vacation, parties, wear the high brand clothes, but what is the truth? One of the things we will address today is truth. You must be honest to enter prosperity. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be, and I'll get into it a little bit later in the episode, but what is the truth? See, the finance category and whether it's in prosperity state is quite easy to know. If you worry about money, you are not in prosperity. Worry is a 100 fear mid red zone energy, while prosperity is attained in expansion state with a base energy of courage. Worry stems from the restriction state, that base energy of fear. You can't be in worry and be in prosperity. You understand, David. Any yeah. comments on that? No, I, I think uh, having that honesty within yourself is is a prosperity uh, kind of that most people don't have just in itself. It's what I want to evoke more than anything today is that honesty. So if we look at the health category, when your health is in a prosperity state, you'll have great energy, recuperative sleep. And you'll have you'll be at a healthy weight. Your lifestyle points of sleep dialed in, water check, developing the mind check, diet check, exercise check become skills habits. See, in the prosperity state of health, you do not worry about diet and exercise. You do not struggle with energy. In prosperity of health, you maintain the head, heart, and hand connection. So, what happens? If you get a disease, can you have a diagnosis? Say you get diagnosed with cancer. Can you have prosperity of health? And the answer is absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. It's how you deal with the disease. Are you dealing with it in courage? Are you dealing with it being proactive? Because here's a fact. All our bodies are going to wear out. Depends how they're going to wear out. But prosperity of health is head, habits, skills, connected to heart, higher, true self, connected to hand, integrity of behavior. So if you get diagnosed with something tomorrow, you're, not, you're going to work on moving through it, dealing with it, overcoming it, or... Sometimes you just have to allow it. There's nothing you can do and you have to surrender. But that's prosperity. And I wanted to put that in there because some of the most peaceful people I've met are ones with terminal illnesses. And it sounds morbid when I'm telling you this, but I'm telling you it was one of the greatest experiences I had was when I had a woman in Panama with terminal cancer. She was only 40 years old. Came in for coaching. I thought, why do you want coaching? Because she goes, yeah, I just want to better myself while I'm here. I thought this was very, I almost cried when, when, when she came. And you know, I'm kind of emotional anyway. <laughs> what an amazing woman that was. Did she have prosperity of health? Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying, David? Yeah, I think that just the, the value of it, you can be in perfect 
shape and you know all that stuff but if you don't value it because it comes easy or you don't really you know you never had a reason to value it then you don't prosper in it you know a lot of people that that wake up call that people get from you know car accidents that you know cause disabilities or setbacks or like you said you know cancers terminal illness things like that when it causes you to appreciate and create value to it and you really hold on to that i think that's what creates a lot of prosperity in a lot of people I think if you, you don't have prosperity and health if you can't get out of bad habits. Mm -hmm. You know, we know, we talk about it all the time, right? Conflict resolutions and changing your programming and everything else. You can't prosper in health from fear. That's just, you can't. You can't from the red zone. You can't prosper through worry. You can't prosper through stress. So that's really where prosperity is in health. And now number four, relationship category. To be in prosperity state in our relationships, we must understand one thing. We cannot fall into judgment. Prosperity state in relationship is all about, like the other categories, it's all about an inside job. It's not the outside, it's the inside. If you defend an attack, if your state is stuck in event, judgment, and reaction, you are in lower red zone energies. And as I stated earlier, you cannot be in a state of prosperity at the same time and be in a state of resentment, regret, or fear. The intimate relationship should be addressed also here. So relationships and people involved can have different habitual states of vibration. Remember, that's what drives your behavior. We've been talking about it the last few weeks. Not the activated state of, uh, activated state, but the habitual state, right? So you can have a couple and they're in two habitual, different habitual states of vibration. But for a couple to have a relationship in prosperity, both must be working on themselves to raise their vibrational states. And I believe this is essential. Can't have one partner working to raise their habitual state and vibration while the other is stuck in a lower habitual state trying to pull them down. How can that create a relationship in prosperity? Prosperity is expansion. Doesn't mean they're on the same levels. I don't expect people to be on the same levels. But if the part one partner is working on themselves and the other one is working on themselves, however they're doing it, then you can have a prosperous relationship. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think when the um the goal is to raise yourself and not focus on the the relationship itself, I think that's what ruins most relationships is that one tries to change the other and the other tries to do that without working on themselves, then that just it, it always it always fails. And I think people think that to prosper in it, it has to be perfect. But I think the goal itself is to constantly ride that wave, the ups and downs, but learning from yep. it. I think that's what really makes it prosper. And most people think it has to be perfect in order to do that. And I, I think that's the wrong thing. I think it has to be perfect within you and both have the same goal in mind is to grow together. And the, and the goal, uh, the goals growth, like you said, to grow together, but the practice is very simple. It's conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. If you go to bed in conflict, you wake up in conflict. If you make the, the partnership agreement that we're not going to bed or sleep in conflict, we're always going to come into resolution first, I guarantee your relationship will grow. But if you go to bed angry, you're going to wake up angry. And that's what builds resentment. And resentment will destroy a relationship because it's always sitting there, whether it's activated or not. And the littlest thing could set that off like dynamite. You understand? Yeah. So now category number five, life category number five is personal and spiritual development. Now prosperity in this life category is about expansion. It's growth and conflict resolution. Prosperity is expansion. Personal development is self-authoring your life, increasing that, what we just talked about, the habitual state of vibration. And this brings you to a, a natural state of prosperity. This is a spiritual growth. It's raising the energy you live in. It's the simplest category there is. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it really is. It's just 
working on your shit. That's what it is. And we all got shit to work on. So today we're talking about allowing prosperity and this is an important distinction. Prosperity cannot be forced. It can never be forced. You can never create prosperity by talking or thinking about lack. To focus on what you don't have or do not want will not bring into your life what you want. Dwelling on obstacles, challenges, being stuck in conflict only creates more of what you don't want. Poverty thinking brings more poverty. So examine your life as if you were going to write a book or make a movie and ask yourself, would you buy the book? Would you want to read the book or watch the movie? If not, how would you rewrite the story? And you have to be bold. All change begins with seeing the truth and being totally honest with yourself. Nothing stops prosperity faster than dishonesty. Whatever energy you put out is what you get back. And please, this is not some new age rhetoric. It's truly how life works. Prosperity is natural expansion and growth. No one needs to tell the acorn to grow into the oak tree. Whatever you give out comes back to you. This is a fact. Negative thoughts vibrate. You get back negative reality. Negative words vibrate. You get back negative reality. Negative people vibrate. You get back negative reality. Be honest with your truth. Being dishonest creates disconnection. This is when you take from life, always taking, and then life will take from you. It's really that simple. Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. Does that make sense to you, David? Yeah, I think one of the best quotes that I've heard was, uh, create more than you consume. And if you're constantly giving back more than you're taking in, I think that's where you really reap the benefits of prospering, you know, that's prosperity, other, watching other people yes, grow, right. doing all this stuff and not sure. worrying because it's going to come back to you regardless, yep. but not focusing on it coming back to you. You know, people tell me all the time, they go, well, you, you say to be honest, I don't steal from anybody. I, I don't go rob stores. I don't go to this. I mean, and I said, this is what I ask. Well, let me ask you this. Are you a person who steals time from another through gossiping? Oh, they say, do you steal time from yourself, your life? Are you procrastinating on what you know you should do or must be done? Are you stealing years from your life or energy from your day because you refuse to let go of bad habits of diet and no movement and being stuck in stress? Are you stealing energy from people through negative comments, maybe posting through social media or feeding hate of some news story? feeding hate and fighting, all of that is stealing. All of that is stealing energy and it's stealing prosperity. Allowing prosperity is simply moving consciousness into intention, feeling, thinking, and acting blessed with your desire manifested. This is what we call in stress mastery the process. It's doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done. It is dealing with conflicts, those boulders as they come in, not from a lack victim attitude, but from a prosperous gratitude attitude. So if you are working toward prosperity in any of those five life categories we just talked about and have strings attached to them, that means you'll have expectations. You will not allow the flow of prosperity. That's what people understand. Allowing prosperity begins with self-discovery. Only you can do this. First of all, when we talk self-discovery, the things that we teach here is discover your purpose, then know your spark of desire, set your intention. We've talked about this a lot on the podcast, and this sets your base. Then after you set your base, I've got some ideas. You ready? So one, Begin and end a day in gratitude. And I'm going to shoot them right back to you, your thoughts. 
uh, one of the biggest things that I've done in the past that's, you know, changed everything for me. Did it help you become prosperous? Yeah. And not in the way that most people think that, you know, value wise of, you know, material, just me actually prospering from the day, taking value from the day, even though I thought it was like a bad day, crappy day, whatever. And I had something to be grateful for that day. I instantly gained value from that day. I didn't lose a day like most people say they do. So begin and end the day in gratitude is connecting to your true self and the heart. It's going into creation mind. Where does prosperity happen? Not from the cage mind, not from the ego, not from knowledge. It happens from the creation mind, the true self, where the super conscious lies, the universe lies. That's why you begin and end a day in gratitude. Number two, dream it. You must set your vision every single day. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, you can't go where you want to go unless you have an idea of where you want to be. Simple. And so why do you think people fight that so much? Because they don't honestly believe they could get there. They think it's a daydream. Great answer. Great answer. Yeah. yeah. If you're honest with yourself, that's an honest answer. Because yeah. if you don't believe it, then you're right. That's what you're putting out there. We create, we build our reality through our vibration. A non-belief vibration, you're going to get a non-belief result. Yeah. And so number three, alter your mindset. Work on conflict resolution. Learn to move out of problem. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, nobody looks at resolutions. They only see what's in front of them instead of what could be. And I think that becomes the issue. Like you said, switching that mindset into how can I fix this until why did this happen to me will change everything about it. And do something. Mm-hmm. Sometimes doing something just letting go. It's still doing something. Remember, to, to go into resolution, to go into event awareness and response. One, you respond to the conflict. Two, you pull back and contemplate how you're going to deal with the conflict. Three, ah, can't do anything about it, you let go. All of those are conflict resolution. And it will move your mindset out of a, it won't, you can't have a problem unless the ego takes the conflict. Always remember that. Yeah. You have a conflict, it's just what is. Until you put a story behind it, you don't have a problem. Will mm-hmm. you put a story behind it? Oh, yeah. Now it's a problem. So number four, for prosperity, to be in that allowing prosperity, construct your reality. Set and close your day. Create health and energy. Work on your habits, diet, exercise, and focus management. Focus management is learning how to work in process. We're going to do a couple shows on this coming up um, in the near future. But what do you think when I say construct your reality, your environment? So I have an episode I actually want to write about that. It's, you know, packing the bag to where you want to go. And it's all those things together. It's, you know, green focus management. It's just putting your clothes out the night before. It's all the small things that allow you to focus on that vision. So things become more clear. People think that overthinking is always negative. Maybe you just got a lot of crap in your head that you can't really focus. So packing that bag allows you to kind of organize and focus on what's really important. Yeah. it really. It, it, it's funny because I don't know how to be any other way. Even when we travel, <laughs> it's, it's automatic. Now I see you do the same thing. I thought the last time we traveled together, I thought, damn. He freaking, he's became me. What the <laughs> hell? You know, he laid everything out, put this out, put his supplements out, put his clothes over here, put that over there. Yeah. It's it, just- it was something that in the beginning I was like, man, nobody should have to live like that so robotic. And then I realized that the extra effort that I thought you were doing actually created less effort later on. Like in the morning, I don't have opens to think. Up your, yeah. It opens your mind. It opens your energy. You're not looking for your socks. Yeah. Imagine if you're looking for your socks, you've you've already screwed up your focus out of prosperity. You're pissed yeah. off, you can't find the socks. Yeah. You know, so number five, I got here. Stop making excuses. Your thoughts. I don't have any thoughts for that one. Yeah, it's because it's it's bad. like it's so clear, right? Mm-hmm. So when you make an excuse to not do something or why you can't do something, you are actually creating a story against prosperity. You are 
when you make an excuse, you are putting yourself in that apathy state. It's pockets of apathy that you're getting. You can't do it. So when you make excuses, you are actually creating a story of non-prosperity. I don't know if that's a word, but that's what it is. <laughs> so number six, attract opportunity, allowing success to enter, dealing with fear. Now, this happens a lot to people. They want something. They're excited about something that comes in their life. They might be a salesperson. They need a new client. And here it comes in their life. And they don't make the phone call. And mm-hmm. they don't set the appointment. And they don't go, I see it happen in coaching all the time. You know, the people, they want to coach. And then you go to set the appointment. <laughs> and they're procrastinating to this. You got to allow opportunity and success to enter when things are coming in your life. It's always going to activate negative first, even when it's good. Why? Hierarchy of the brain. So what are your thoughts on that? And again, attract opportunity, allowing success to enter, dealing with fear. The the one thing I'd say on that is the recognizing opportunity. Most people have uh, an expectation of how that opportunity should enter their life. And they miss the actual opportunity because it didn't happen the way they wanted. You know, I think that's the biggest thing is that people let it walk by and then their coworker gets it and it's like, oh, that's unfair. No, it was in front of your face. They recognized that you didn't. And I think that's the issue because we set so many expectations that sure. if it doesn't go the way it's supposed to, then it's not the opportunity for me. Very good answer. Number seven, stop complaining and talking down about others. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it, it it's more effort to talk down on others than to be positive. I think that was one of the biggest things that uh, I, I taught Vanessa at work is that it's easy to get caught up in it because everybody's doing it. And then she started to say, well, we don't know what they're going through or, you know, all these things. And to find out that the stories that they made up didn't match the stories that were actually happening. And then they actually had sympathy and uh, empathy for that person because they were talking all this stuff sure. and it showed that that person was actually struggling, trying to do the most. And I think you never know anyone's story and it's easier to be positive than it is to be negative. And that is magnetic desire, right? One person starts to complain and the other one with the want to belong wants to join into the group. Two people start to complain. Now three people. Now you have a whole group, right? You have to get out of that group. If somebody is gossiping about another person and you're in a group, remove yourself. Because Mm -hmm. you're not going to change the group, first of all. Because the moment you say something, they're going to go and defend and attack. You can't win that. Yeah, You can't. You must walk away unless you can bring down a deaf effect. And it's not easy when it's a group. Yeah, for sure. You know? So number eight, last one, commit to your dreams, write it down, journal your progress, create streaks, see it, feel it, work into the law of mind of what you think you create, what you feel you attract, what you imagine you become. So your thoughts on this last one on allowing prosperity by committing to your dreams. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. It's going to get hard. I mean, it's it's going to get hard. Anything that's worth doing is going to be hard. I think the expectation of doing it, but looking at it for only for yourself. I think that's what most people do when they commit to their dreams. Their dreams are usually just about themselves. There's a quote that says, a man who plants a tree knowing he would never sit in the shade has begun to understand life. And I think that's the biggest thing. If your dream is for other people way past you and you won't even see those people who get to enjoy it or reap the benefit and you do it anyway, that's more important than doing anything for yourself. That's actually my whole life, buddy. Very good. Because I know I'm not going to see the end of this when mm-hmm. I'm done. I know I'm not. And that's okay. I'm leaving the groundwork for everybody else to work on it. Yeah, because everybody so, else gets to sit in that shade. But Let them sit in the shade. That's why you work. So allowing prosperity is the process of allowing life, people. Those so-called bad events may just open doors you never dreamed of. If you allow events to keep you stuck in those low red zone energies of apathy, you create the victim story and you create the victim reality. If you stay in the mid zone energy, red zone energies, you, you, you're stuck in fear. And it keeps you stuck in a negative reality. You create a stressed out life and anxious reality. If you are stuck in the higher red zone energies of anger, you create a frustrated wanting reality. 
See, we each must deal with our own blocks to prosperity. This begins with being honest. And it's all about increasing her habitual state to the mountain, dealing with the activated states of the valley. But it begins with being honest with yourself. Go through your five life categories of be honest. Are you in prosperity? And if you're not, it's okay. That's the awareness. Now you have the awareness. What are the practices that I can get into prosperity? And those practices then will turn into skills. Mm -hmm. That's all I got, Dave. What are your thoughts? You want to have anything for closing this one? No, I think the the removing expectations and be honest with yourself. Those are the two things. You can't prosper. You should be prospering more than even you're, you could imagine. But if you're limiting yourself, I think you're only going to get what you limit yourself to. So have no expectations and it may go further than you could ever imagine. Well said. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below in the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.